Recently there's been a strange surge of FNAF fans online, randomly speaking out and saying that Sister Location, a game that came out over 6 years ago, is a really weak game compared to all of the others. I believe the debate originated from Aryeh's video from a month ago, in which he talks about why he doesn't like Sister Location. But the cool thing about opinions is that everyone's got one, and as far as I can see, everyone's opinion on this matter is completely valid. I've been doing some research into why this is such a controversial topic, why people who dislike the game dislike it, and why the rest of the people don't believe it's that bad. And so today I want to briefly break down a lot of the aspects of the game for you in a concise manner and I'd love for you all to discuss your opinions in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe if you enjoy my content, I hit 20k on my birthday the other day and I'm blown away by all the support that I've been getting recently, so thank you. I think for me, Sister Location's gameplay is very hit or miss. You'll have a lot of great engaging and difficult moments within the game, but the linear structure of it means a lot of elements and concepts introduced early on never really had a solid payoff. The reason a big bulk of Sister Location exists is solely for continuity purposes. For instance, the knights have you begin by using the lights to see the animatronics and the controlled shocks to make sure they're in working order. The thing is, this is simply the story disguised as gameplay. There are unused assets in the files that show how the windows could have been utilised. The vents are similar in this regard. It feels like they set them up as gameplay mechanics, which would have been a really fun twist on the original FNAF formula, but instead it is only used to creep you out, which I will say is very effective. When I first saw the dead technicians through the windows, it did shake me a little. It's very unnerving. And at the end of the day, these scenes in the primary control module and the vents are probably there just to build tension. It did rub me the wrong way though, I feel like it should have had more of a bearing on the gameplay itself. From an outside perspective, it's very easy to see how Sister Location varies a lot from the original tetralogy of games. Instead of a repetitive process with increasing difficulty, every night is vastly different from one another. Night 2 has you hiding under the desk keeping the door closed while Billy Babs tried to get through to jump scare you. This is an extremely simple task compared to what we already know from FNAF. The original games are all about resource management and the tension of being overwhelmed by a lot of different elements at once. I think instead of doing that, Sister Location had these elements put in a linear story. Saying all of that, the task of hiding under the desk is a good easy start to the game and gets players to quickly understand its updated structure. Then you have to get through Ballora's gallery which is very intense. It's all based on sound and of course that's great for content creators because they need to turn the volume up and when they get jump scared it's much louder than they expect. But I'd say this kind of gameplay is really unique and well done in this game. Especially when you can see the door getting closer and closer. It makes players tempted to rush because they feel as though they are so close, but in order to complete the section they need to be as careful as possible to not mess up in their suspense. Then there's the gameplay of the breaker room which I'd say is closer to FNAF's original formula of having a lot to do and looking out for. And here I really like the mechanics at play. Just like walking through Ballora's, it's extremely tempting to take risks that would save time, but there seems to be a theme of taking things slow and steady here, which could definitely be a point of contention with this game. Once you clear this section, you have to go back through Ballora's gallery, but you don't actually get attacked by Ballora here, which sounds like a stupid thing to do at first, but is actually quite clever as the game trains and conditions you to take everything slow so that when the threat is actually removed from the equation, you don't know the difference and still think in the same way. It's also a matter of trying not to lose progress. After doing Ballora's Gallery once and also beating Funtime Freddy, it would suck to get jump scared and go back to the start. So the game deceives you by making you think you have high stakes and that increases the tension, which I love. There also seems to be this overarching theme of deception. On night 3 you have to go through the Funtime Auditorium where Funtime Foxy works in the complete opposite way as Ballora. 
This might actually be my least favourite gameplay in the game, but I might be saying that because I'm generally just really bad at it. I think it's really hard to get through consistently, but I do have to give credit where it's due. This part is twice as nerve wracking as Ballora's Gallery. You are in pitch black with no sound, and by moving at any time you're risking a jump scare. <laughs> Then you get to parts and service, where one of the funniest jump scares in the game is. The gameplay is essentially the same as parts and service in Help Wanted, but the twist that I really like in this one is that Bon Bon goes missing and you have to try and find him. It is such a pain in the backside to try to find him, but I think it really adds to the character and I think this gameplay is really neat and engaging. Then, at the end of Night 3, you go back through the Funtime Auditorium and a similar psychology is at play here. Your stakes are very high, you don't want to have to do this part again, and if you get jump scared, you might throw your computer out the window. That's why I think it is super clever that there is a scripted jump scare here, because it will deceive the player into thinking they did something wrong. They'll get annoyed, realise it was intended, and then be a lot happier to be progressing through to Night 4. Speaking of which, you might hear people talk about their times with this section of the game because of how difficult everyone found it. When you're in the scooping room, you have to make sure that the spring locks don't fire, while also shaking the mini arenas off of you. Not only is this part of the game horrifying to watch, it's also super intense and challenging at first. I do think it's a good difficulty level, however. On night 5, you finally come face to face with Baby, who is admittedly creepy but this is the only time we actually see her in the entire game. That to me is quite a big problem, because she is underutilised, especially compared to how we originally saw her in the trailer. Then of course the only bit of gameplay left for me to talk about is the secret Ennard room and custom night. I thought the addition of this was absolutely phenomenal, since the location, I have to admit, feels pretty bare bones when talking about gameplay. It feels like it strays quite far away from the original formula of FNAF, and not necessarily in a good way. However, the reintroduction of the classic FNAF Knights was genius. It meant Scott could include a ton of new characters with interesting mechanics, and it would feel familiar again. This was, of course, the format of gameplay that revolutionised the state of indie horror games in the last decade, so a FNAF game without that same vibe doesn't sit quite right. Overall, I'd say there's a huge variety of gameplay waiting for you in Sister Location, but the lack of repetition like the previous games makes this one feel less replayable. In my personal opinion though, I'd say that's the main thing that holds the game down. Everything should start to get better from here. The environment that Sister Location provides is absolutely phenomenal. I've heard a lot of people talk about how the game made the series too sci-fi, but honestly I, I don't really know where that's come from. Just because there's an underground entertainment and rentals location with seemingly upgraded animatronics, that doesn't automatically make the franchise sci-fi. I actually really like what Sister Location brings to the series, even though I have to admit it does feel quite out of place. The game is full of blue and green lighting, which makes the environment feel dark and sickly, without it actually being too dark. The animatronic designs with the moving faceplates makes them creepier, and they feel more fluid. But the big thing that changed between the original FNAF series and Sister Location was the inclusion of voice acting. Not only did voice acting help to tell a more cohesive story, it also gave more characterization to the animatronics and to the game as a whole. I want to say one thing. Yes! Funtime Freddy might have been German. If he, <laughs> what? If he chose that take. I did two takes of the voice, one with my normal accent yeah. and one with a German accent. Because what I find... German Funtime Freddy! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, little children. Glad to see you back again. Come closer. I'll sing a song for you. <laughs> oh, that would have been that is, terrifying. That is an alternate reality. That would have been so, it's, yeah. a, it's the parallel universe. Even the music played a huge role in creating an eerie atmosphere. And honestly, I could create a whole video discussing the music in Sister Location because I think it has one of the best soundtracks in the series. 
but perhaps the best example of the voice acting and music combo can be found in the final Custom Night cutscene of the game. Father, I found it. It was right where you said it would be. They were all there. They didn't recognize me at first, but then they thought I was you. She's free now. But something is wrong with me. I should be dead, but I'm not. I'm going to come find you. I'm going to come find you. I think all of this proves that while the first four games of FNAF told an incredible story by itself with an eerie vibe and a unique concept, Sister Location was a huge upgrade. I'd argue it was a revolution to the series. The games could have gone anyway really, but I'm glad it went this way. While there were a lot of changes, a lot of things still stayed the same, such as the original teasers and the incredible trailer. The way Ennard was revealed was spine-chilling. The tentacle-like wires tangled into a strange form of an animatronic. The characterization here is perfect. Here's the thing. I don't think any of these animatronics were really used very well. I go back to my point about Circus Baby. We only see her in parts and service, which admittedly is pretty creepy with the blacked out eyes and drooped position, but she could have been used a lot more. Even if we were able to see her in her room, it would give us more. The only characterization we really get is in her voice, which Heather Masters does an incredible job with. And Ennard is great as a final boss and as a presence that's staring at you in the scooping room, but as a tangle of wires, I kind of expected his presence to be creepier. I talked a little bit in my Nightmare On video about how just seeing the tentacles was terrifying, because it's simply evidence of its existence. Sometimes not being able to see the full animatronic is more scary than the contrary. I feel like actually seeing the tentacle-like wires in the corner of your eye would have increased anxiety within the game. This image of Molten Freddy still creeps me out to this day. There's no real structure to the character in this form, but that's what makes it more terrifying. So in terms of the characterization and sister location, I think the themes are very well built on, but a lot of opportunities were also missed. The characters and environment are some of the most iconic in the series, but they shine the best in the teasers and in the future games. This location story is pretty simple to piece together, but also gives theorists a lot to consider. I'm going to be going through a list of story and lore related elements presented in the game and discuss why I think they were good or bad for the series. Before the release of the game, we were shown a map of the location, and if you looked closely, you could see two hidden rooms above and below the Funtime Auditorium. This is, of course, the scooping room and the private room, but when you look at the map in the breaker room, you see a lot more shapes. It turns out this is all from FNAF 4, and it proves that Circus Baby's entertainment and rentals is below the FNAF 4 house. In the private room, if you type 1983 into the number pad, you also see these rooms from FNAF 4. I think these secrets are beautifully well executed, and this was a very, very good way to connect Sister Location to the prior four games. We now know from this game that Afton is the murderer, and by extension we've seen his whole family. From the introductory speech, we become aware that there were design choices he made in these animatronics that were questionable, to say the least. There's no doubting what you've achieved on a technical level. There are just certain design choices that were made for these robots that we don't fully understand. She can dance. She can sing. She's equipped with a built-in helium tank for inflating balloons right at her fingertips. With all due respect, those aren't the design choices we were curious about, Mr. Afton. You are able to find these blueprints, which go into a lot more detail about what the Funtime animatronics are and what they do. Hand Unit is absolutely hilarious. His addition to the game makes everything super exciting and fresh, and he is the one who tells us that our character is Mike. We got scooped, Ennard used our body and left us as a decaying purple guy, but still alive. Between nights after the Immortal and the Restless, we hear the voice of Elizabeth. Daddy, bloody 
the other children go to see her? Why won't you let me go? Mike's sister and William's daughter, who can be connected to this minigame, which shows how Baby captured her. This can be connected back to the blueprints and also the story that Baby tells you in the game. One thing I really love about all of this is how it really ties together who everyone is in the Afton family, while it also gives us a red herring that Michael is the purple guy. Mike Trap is a terrible theory. Then I would say the last big thing this game presents to us is that there is in fact a Springlock suit down here. I think it's nice within these games to have a nice variety of questions we can answer and other questions that we can't. And to this day it's still a mystery as to what this suit is, though I believe it could be an early Circus Baby design that was later used by Scrap Baby. And really, that's sister location. I'm sure I have missed out a lot of things, but this was only supposed to be a brief overview of the game. So here's my final conclusion that I hope many of you are going to be able to identify with. Sister Location was a wonderful, refreshing reboot to the series. Scott clearly improved between games and put his heart and soul into making one. The new addition of voice acting and the beautifully composed music create a great balance of horror and hilarity, but there are definitely a lot of things wrong with it. The gameplay is boring, most of it can be compared to a PowerPoint presentation, and there are characters that were designed fantastically but underused or used in the wrong way. With that being said, none of it takes away from the story at all, and Sister Location is so extremely iconic to this very day. I just think that with the overexposed series today it gets overlooked and it has lost the magic that we all initially felt at its release. I asked you whether you thought Sister Location was a good game or a bad game and here are the results. I'm glad that a lot of people love the game and that the response is positive overall but we definitely shouldn't glorify it because there are flaws and it's far from a perfect game. I think something to learn is that Within the FNAF series, there's definitely something for everyone. There's classical arcade style horror, there's deep lore for those searching for it, there's funny moments and tragic moments, books and spin-off games, free roam and virtual reality, and then there's FNAF AR which we don't talk about. Make sure to subscribe, let me know if there's any other games or topics you'd like me to talk about next, and I'll see you then, goodbye.